Hi everyone, in this video I'm gonna try to explain how to do this tutorial I wrote a while back to record multiple Skype tracks from multiple people in Ableton Live having each one on his own separate track in order to achieve the best possible audio quality and basically we're gonna use our Mac as a mixer and we're gonna use an aggregate audio device which basically lets us aggregate um, a few Sunflower instances uh, into just one uh, virtual sound card which Ableton can then use to mix the audio and do its stuff. Sunflower is a tool which was made by Cycling74 which is basically a dummy sound card which has a pair of inputs and a pair of outputs. W whatever comes in from the inputs goes straight out from the outputs. Uh, we can think of that kind of like a, a sort of an audio cable which we can use to connect our applications. In this demo it, it's gonna be Skype and maybe you can have Nicecast or something like that to broadcast whatever you um, put, in, put inside Ableton to the internet. And the first step we gotta do is to install some flower and we also have to edit it in order to get more instances of it. Because out of the box it only comes with a stereo instance and a 16 channel one which might sound good but it's really not because Skype cannot choose which channels to use in the 16 channel one so basically we gotta have some playlist editing in order to get it to really um, have multiple instances with just two channel each um, to do so I strongly suggest that you download the DMG I've made available on my site. You will have you will find the, uh, the link in the description of this video, and of course, on lucatnt.com you can find it. And it's it's basically pre-made. You're gonna find uh, enough sound uh, some flower instances to do what we have to do. Once you install that, and you you're gonna have to reboot your Mac. Keep that in mind. Once you've done that, you're gonna have to open Audio MIDI Setup. You can see I have quite a few Sunflower instances here and I have already made some devices to fiddle with. But for this demo, I'm gonna add a new one. You can click the plus button in the lower left corner and click on Create Aggregate Device. You can name it whatever you want. I will name it uh, um, Soundflower Tutorial and we're gonna have to choose which devices are gonna be in our aggregate device. First I strongly advise to choose whatever microphone and headphone you use. I could use my Mac's built-in microphone and output but I'm gonna use this USB microphone from Audio-Technica that I'm using at the moment which is better and by clicking this box I'm gonna add it to the to the aggregate device. Keep in mind that this device shows uh, with both two input channels and two output channels which means basically one stereo input and one stereo output in, if you went with your Max built-in ones, you will have to check both the built-in microphone or input and uh, the built-in output, which are gonna show up one as an input and one as an output, but that's not the case for me. So uh, after I'm done selecting uh, my own microphone and headphones, I can go ahead and add uh, a few Sunflower instances. I'm gonna add let's say uh, five of them so that I can use two for each uh, um, Skype instance I'm gonna be running and uh, another one which can be used as I said before uh, to output the whole mix to maybe Nicecast or 
audacity whatever it doesn't matter this is pretty simple also make sure you uh, tick the box for drift correction which I've found is pretty useful at times then we can close this uh, window and go ahead and open Ableton Live now in this demo I'm using Ableton 9 but it doesn't really matter you can use Ableton 8 in fact the tutorial was based on Ableton 8 nothing has changed maybe some graphics will be different but a will work exactly in the same way so uh, command comma to get to your preferences and here you will have to choose your device which you just created both as an audio input and the, as the audio output so go ahead I will f uh, choose sunflower tutorial in both of them and then comes the tricky part because you have to select which inputs you're gonna use of your device so I'm gonna click input config and I'm gonna have to choose not all of this I'm gonna a bit, uh, selecting one every other of these options so basically this one because I'm gonna be using my microphone of course which was the first one I selected in the audio in the aggregate audio device I'm gonna skip the Sunflower instance which will bring the audio back from Skype into Ableton then I will have to use the one which gives Skype the audio from Ableton and so on for all the other instances then in the output config you have to use this time the stereo um, outputs because yeah it's always better so the first one is basically your headphones then these two go um, to to Skype and then this will do the same for the first Skype second Skype and then the our auxiliary master something yeah you got that so go ahead click OK close your preferences and here comes the interesting part make sure you have your sender returns enabled in here in the right side and we can go ahead and delete these MIDI tracks we are not gonna be using them and also enable the input output panel so here you can see uh, as I speak through the mic you can see these these meters going up and down as uh, I speak so this is correct which means that the first track will gonna will be my microphone so I'm gonna rename it microphone the second track will receive the audio from Skype so uh, I'm gonna select the fifth input I'm gonna press command T to add uh, yet another, another track and it will get the audio from channel 9 uh, so we're pretty much done with inputs uh, let's look at outputs we're gonna use these return tracks to send the correct audio to each Skype instance we want everybody to hear our own voice so we're gonna turn up both these knobs here so that uh, the audio coming from our microphone will go both to send A and send B here we can configure them we're gonna first get rid of these effects just click on them and hit backspace we don't want to have any effects on our voice at least not a delay or an echo so rename this I'll, this will be Skype 1 or better yet 2 Skype 1 because that audio is going to Skype not from Skype then this will be to Skype 2 and here audio 2 by default it goes to the master channel we don't want that we we want to send that to the ex an uh, external output select that and this should be Skype 3 4 yeah and the same here but the track is gonna be Skype uh, channel 7 and 8 the master output will be uh, 11 and 12 which was the auxiliary send um, which I was mentioning all along so basically uh, there's only one last thing we have to do in Ableton which is to enable monitoring uh, you click on the input 
uh, mode in here for monitors so that uh, all the audio that comes in through these channels will be processed in real time by Ableton. You can see here there's these meters that moves as I speak. Uh, last thing, command click all these record buttons in here. Uh, I was option clicking, sorry. Um, to enable recording for all of all these three tracks at the same time. So we can maybe make Ableton a bit smaller so that we can open Skype for our first Skype instance. It's pretty easy, just open Skype as you would do um, normally. So here you can see all my contacts and stuff. We go into preferences, look into the audio video tab and make sure that the microphone is set to Soundflower. Hey, hi, that's me. And we can see that sound is coming in from Ableton and the speakers we're gonna be Sky Soundflower B. So let's make a quick test call to make sure we got everything correctly. Here you can see that there is audio coming in from Skype. Actually, I've forgotten to uh, bring up this knob, which means that uh, I'm gonna terminate that. Sorry, I'm making sort of a mess here, but bear with me. Uh, this A knob, uh, no, that's gonna, <laughs> gotta be down, sorry. We're gonna bring up the big knob and here the A, which means that this guy, Skype number one, will send its audio to Skype B, but um, but not to its own um, sound. So I don't know what uh, that this was still going. Sorry. Um, the idea is that everybody should hear everybody but themselves. So uh, we'll be turning down volume A for Skype A so that he can see can hear anybody but him, and the opposite for uh, the B channel. One last thing. Uh, note that we have uh, f output one and two for the Q output, so that's your monitor. So you have to um, click on this solo button here to flick the monitoring mode, and command click these two, these two guys here, which means that you will be able to hear whatever they're saying. So after I'm done messing with this. Uh, comes the fun part. You have to go to system preferences if you not if you did not do that before. Go to the users and groups pane, and make sure to add a few users uh, to your Mac. We you will gonna need a, a separate user for each Skype instance you're gonna launch. So in this example, I'm only gonna be launching one, so I'm gonna use one account I already have set up. If you did not have other users on your machine, just click here on the padlock button and go ahead and add any user you want. We're gonna have to use the terminal, you can find that through Spotlight, of course, terminal. And here there was some mess I was doing before, clear to get that out of the way. So you got you gotta do this part right. So sudo su, which means switch user, but run that as uh, the administrator. So basically I don't have to remember the password for the user I'm switching to. And my username is Tractor. So hit enter and enter your admin password or rather your user password. And um, then you have to, to write the correct path to the Skype executable. It's not enough to go into your application folder, find the Skype icon and drag it on over the terminal because that's basically the application bundle. You have to get to the actual executable. So it's usually slash application. You can use the tab key to auto complete whatever you're seeing. Uh, then Skype, then there is the contents folder, which is the only one in the Skype.app folder then macOS, and lastly, Skype. Once you've typed all, typed all that, hit enter and wait for Skype to load. It often forgets uh, the user password when you uh, open, uh, 
repeatedly uh, from a different user, but this wasn't the case. It worked fine. Go to the preferences. Sorry, this is in Italian, but yeah, I think you can get it. Here is the microphone. Uh, I'm, it's or no, I'm gonna set it to C, and then this is gonna be D. So microphone and output will gonna be these two. Test call, and you can see here is the audio from Skype. I'm not sure you could hear that, but that's only due to the audio setup I'm using here to record this demo. And remember, never close the terminal windows when you have Skype open from the other users, so just minimize them to get them out of the way. So here, we have two Skype windows running as different users. You can see here the users are different and they are logged in at the same time. Notice also that here in Ableton you can see that my voice, which comes through channel 1, is going to both send A and send B. So both Skype call, uh, calls will get what I'm saying. But if I start some audio, basically the Skype test call on uh, the first Skype, only uh, Skype, this, uh, this return track to Skype 2 is going to be receiving audio because we don't want to send back the audio from this Skype instance back to itself. Let's see. Okay, so uh, I think everything is working. We can, we could actually make uh, a test call between these two guys here and you will hear really a mess then the nice lady will say record a message after the beep and this one will say the same they're gonna talk over each other it's a mess so uh, i'm not really gonna do that but i'm gonna show you a couple tricks which might be useful if you're trying to record a podcast like i am so uh, select all of your tracks right click and group all of them uh, so that you can uh, apply effects based on all of them together and also the fun part is that you can add another audio track which you're gonna send to both of your Skype calls and you can add an audio effect for this example I'm gonna add a, comp a compressor here you can expand it and sidechain it from the group um, which I've just created what this lets us do is have a jingle track where you can have maybe your show theme. I'm gonna pick that. Uh, it's not really this one, but it's gonna do the job just the same. And um, when I hit play, everybody can hear that on Skype as well. And I'm, I added this compressor because I want to have the level of the music go down as soon as anybody starts talking. So here you can see that the group input was selected because otherwise I would have to have three compressors, one for each channel. This way I can have only one. You can then lower the threshold, which means that you can see as soon as I speak, the gain reduction kicks in and the, the level of your jingle track of your song of your whatever will go down to let the voice stand out. So that's it. I hope it was sufficiently clear, even though I messed up half, half of the time, but you have to bear with me. If, it, if I was not clear, please refer to the, uh, the tutorial you can find on my site, which hopefully was much more thought through and you will ha you will definitely be able to understand it better anyhow if you have any further questions feel free to ask have a nice day